I wanted to begin by telling you that in life, you need to dream big. Maybe you're here and you're still doubting who you're going to be tomorrow. That dream that you continuously see is who you're going to be. Where do you see yourself in the next five years or ten years? Do you see yourself as a sad girl grieving over the problems that have happened in your life? Or you're seeing yourself as a great woman out there that has already broken the glass ceiling? I'll share a story about my son, the son of my late sister. When she died in 2017, the boy was in S5. He had just become a head boy of King's College, Budo. And you all know Budo, it is a brand. It's mega, it's powerful. So as the boy was campaigning for his elections, the mom was busy dying in Sambia Hospital. We kind of concealed them from knowing. So he becomes a head boy. He comes for the burial. He was very, very sad. He goes back, third term, S5. He fails. I think he got a five. So because we, we thought that life is about excuses, grieving over your issues, etc. We go to Mr. Bakamale, me, my mom, my dad, my sister. We we're only three sisters, so we remain two. And my mom was busy saying, you know, this boy has lost his mother. I said, you, the mother died of cancer. The mother has battled for five years. Guess what? Mr. Bakamale told us this is King's College Budo. And, and Jethro is a head boy. We don't need any excuse. He either passes or we make him repeat S5. Every week, we see parents that are dying. So the best you can do is to tell your son to pick up himself, read hard, because the chapter of the mother is done. So we went back. They told us we are going to give him a counselor, ETC. So I told Jethro a few things that I think I can share with you. That life is not about excuses. You've lost your mom, but the last conversation you had with her is that you need to be a doctor. As we speak, he's in his fourth year finishing medicine in the name of Jesus. So I've learned that sometimes, I've learned that sometimes we give so many excuses, especially as women, I lost my mom, we don't have school fees. Like some of us who come from poor backgrounds, God has made us this far. If I recall very well, my mom used to pay, pay installments. Sometimes I tell my children and they laugh. My mom used to pay in small bits. And I was used that every beginning of term should be pleading at the headmistress's office at Nabingo. Nyabo, you know, for us we're just like known that we are the people that pay installments. So life will never, never, never work for people that give excuses. Thank you. So if you're here and you've been nursing excuses even before you came, please give up your excuses. Believe that you can be and you're going to be. The other lesson I learned that life is for big dreamers. I started motivation even before I became a CEO. I love motivating people and mostly women. Even in our village, I motivate people. Today I was supposed to be in a church of Uganda motivating our rural women. But I told them, you know what? Last year I was with you, this time let me go and spend time elsewhere with people. So the person you see today is the person you're going to be tomorrow. For us who are very strong Christians, we know that God always asked the people, what do you see? When you close your eyes, when you sleep, do you see a great woman? Do you see a, a, a powerful judicial officer? Do you see a corporation secretary? Do you see a CEO? The dream you see is the person you're going to become, ladies and gentlemen. What you continuously envisage. That's why when you look at the Bible in Genesis 13, God told Abraham that step out and look up. He told him, look from wherever you are. What do you see? And he told him that I sisters. He told him all the things that you see, so you will be. It means what we continuously see, ladies, is what will be. It becomes the rudder. It becomes that image. I kept seeing myself motivating people until we birthed the Female Lawyers Network. And lately I'm seeing myself in international big conferences motivating people in Canada, in USA, in Europe. And I want to assure you very soon you'll see me on that platform in the name of Jesus. And if your dream does not scare you, then it's not big enough. 
I'm telling you, I can imagine things and I can envisage things. And the size of your dream should exceed your current capacity. If you want, like for the, the lords that are here, if you want to be the first CJ, continue to see yourself swearing in, continue to see yourself speaking your first inaugural speech, continue to, to, to walk the talk because you're attracted to what you continuously see now and again. And another thing I've learned is that all high achievers are big dreamers. They even dream even before they have anything. They start seeing and saying, this is who Nalunga is going to be. And the more they see it, the more they walk towards it. The more they imagine it, the more they walk towards it. I remember even before I joined the tribunal, I looked around in my family, I said, Banang, this is just too much. My mom produced six kids. Now one has died, we are five. No one has sworn in before His Excellency the President. So jokingly, I told mommy, nah, mommy, you're now 80. I think one day you need to know that I'm going to swear before the President of Uganda. And lo and behold, God made a way for me in the name of Jesus. And I still believe that one day I'll go back for something much bigger in the name of Jesus. Why? Don't be comfortable with where you are. The biggest challenge for us women is we settle. I'm not comfortable at El City. No, 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 no. I need to see myself in an international space. I need to see myself so great out there. I need to know that I can be much more than simply being there. And the more you dream big, the more you get there. Remember, Joseph kept seeing himself somewhere. And he told his brother and his father, Jacob, he said, Dad, guess what? I dreamt when I'm the standing stock and all the rest are bowing down for me. I was the moon and all the stars were bowing down for me. Of course, the brothers thought that that was a joke. But your dream will always remain the rudder to your next level. So I want to call upon the students that are here. Dream big. See yourself far. Imagine yourself great. If you want to be a chief legal, see yourself a smart chief legal seated in a board meeting, analyzing corporate governance, interpreting company law. Continue to see it and work towards it. I always ask my children, I told you I have nine children at home. I took on the three of my late sister, then I have my beautiful stepdaughters that are lawyers now, and my biological children. The youngest now at home is 13 and has already left. So I have five kids at university. Every holiday I tell them, where do you see yourself, Byron? Where do you see yourself, Jordana? Don't look at now, because God keeps saying in Genesis 13 that look from wherever you are. What do you see? He even told Abraham, look in the north, look in the south, look in the east, look in the west. He didn't even give him time to breathe. He told him that all that you see, I'll give to you and your descendants forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. Allow me to coin it and say that that image you see yourself from wherever you are like today is what God is going to make you in the name of Jesus. Keep looking at it. Then the other thing that I've seen that I think I should share with you is self-belief is key. Believe in yourself. You know, sometimes we think we cannot amount to anything. Sometimes we think that life has choked us so much. Like I told you about my son Jethro. I kept telling him, see yourself. Even, even, medis, even for him to finish Form 6, his grades were not good. They were not so good. But I told him we have to go and you start medicine. Believe in yourself. From today, after this session, believe you can amount to anything. Confidence is what you create on a daily basis. And you decide to believe in yourself. There are so many things that choke our confidence as we work. People will laugh at you. People will tell you, if, like, for example, me, I'm too much. I'm just too much. I don't even know where I go. I think it's my mom's energy. I'm all over the place. But that energy has positioned me so far. And I cannot be anybody else. When I was growing up, I wanted to be like my sister. I follow. She's an introvert. She's calm. She's from Gayaza. Me, I came from Nabingo. Mommy wanted me so much to go to Gayaza, but she failed to get a place after benching for three months. So I, 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 sometimes I used to try and say, let me talk like my sister. She talks very softly. Um, Joyce, where are you going to be today? Me, I can't talk like that. <laughs> One time I wanted to train myself to even talk like my boss. Rose is a very, a, a very humble lady, very introverted and calm. 
but you can only be the best version of you. I learned I cannot be my sister Sandra. I cannot be the president here. I have to be me because we're created so different, so unique. We have a lot of potential. Our purpose is hidden in us. That's why the Bible says in Isaiah 59, 16, that God has inscribed us on the palm of his hands and our wounds are continuously before him. We are so different. We are unique. We cannot be any other version of anybody else. So that's, that has really pushed me so far. I've learned to be confident. Confident when I speak. For example, when I go to speak to our rural women there in Imperial, I just put on my gumas and chitenji. Sometimes I don't want to over scare, scare them. I take off most of the jewelry. I make sure that makeup, the lipstick is not too much. It is just like a brownish-ish. So that when I'm talking to them, <laughs> they pick the message. So confidence is very important. When you leave this place, students, begin. I told my kids at home, when you're in class, sit in front. If I go to, to for, for, for a parent's day and my son is not in the concert, it offends me. Because my mom used to do it. If any of my children are not standing for leadership positions, there's a problem. Last year I had to go when my son was standing for a position. Of course we lost, but I went as a cheerleader and some of the siblings. <laughs> But I was a good cheerleader, at least I was there. I was clapping for him, you know, because he had crammed the speech. The point I want to tell you is try and be confident and practice your next journey. Go through everything you need to be. The other key aspect is be bold and courageous. Don't fear. Let me tell you, me, when I was at Uganda Law Society as a CEO, people used to call me a picture CEO because I love photos. I love photos. I move with my photographer. I move with my makeup artist. I move with a video camera guy, and that's Anthony there. <laughs> I'm excess. <laughs> so you have to make sure that you're bold to be yourself. I'm not any other person. This is the Nalunga version that you're seeing. I need to keep my memory. I need to keep my things. I need to share them on YouTube. I need to share them around. Sometimes I share them on WhatsApp groups. And they are all over the place. And some people inbox me and say, language is so sad. But let me tell you, Mukuchi Itiriza is where God has opened doors for me. Yeah. Do you know when I have no place to talk, I can go on our, our village forum and say, Parents, I wanted to talk about drafting a will, a Kazoom session. We have a platform of 234 people. Then we form a, Kavu, a Kazoom session. I talk, talk to people. Why? Because that's my passion. I'm interested in it. I love it. That is who Joyce is. So what I want to encourage you colleagues and students that are here, don't be bold to be who you are. Because when you're not bold, other people will suffocate you who you are. Be courageous. Understand that this is who you are. I understood who I am. I accepted it and I go that far. Sometimes the time I went with my children to escort me when I was going to mentor village youth, there were over 240 last holiday, they gathered them during this the crisis of LGBT ETC. So I posted on our forum that can we mobilize the children that are on holiday so that we can give them a session. I went with my kids. They always say, Naye mami vanage, holy too much mami. I tell them my dear. Let me talk to these youth so that we can be able to benefit. But interestingly, after the session, I discovered so many of the girls that are probably living in bar. Some of them are pregnant. Some of them are being defiled. Others have been sexually abused in the spaces of their parents. Others are going through so much. Others visit. So one thing I've learned, continue to dig deep in your potential. Don't fear. Do what you can do best and leave the rest to God. Remember, God wants us to take a step. That's why he told Moses that you get your road and touch on the Red Sea. He told Joshua that let the Levites move with the ark and step into the water. There is a part we need to play as. Are you stepping into the water or you're simply fearing, I'm shy, I can't manage, people laughed at me. Do you know how many times they've laughed at me? Even my kids sometimes can say, Mami, I don't to go get a mommy. No, 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 mommy. Please allow us to stay. So don't fear that people will always think that you, know, you cannot amount to anything. Let me also say something that is very important that I've learned 
be visionary. It's very important. Jeremiah 1.15 says, God told Jeremiah, what do you see? Jeremiah said, I see the branch of an almond tree. He told him, you've seen very well. He said, I'll watch over my word to fulfill it. Meaning that God wants us to see, like I told you in Genesis 13, continue to have that vision. Continue to see yourself. Uh, continue to know that you're bigger than what people see. Every morning, wake up and say, I'm so great. I'm important. I'm a VIP. There is no one like me. The more you say it, the more you become it. So for me, that is one of the things that has really, really helped me. Then the other thing that I thought I would share is self-awareness. Are you aware of your weaknesses? Are you aware? Of, because I, we, we learn to mitigate our weaknesses. Of course, one of my weaknesses, sometimes I talk too, too, too much. Okay? Learn how to leverage. Learn how to time. Learn how to know certain things. Learn to manage. The other weakness is multitasking. You take on so many things and you get stressed. Become aware of who you are. List down your strength. Who are you? Because if you don't know who you are, people are going to give you a definition. If you don't know who you are, you're going to walk in a brand of somebody else. People are going to wake up and give you another direction altogether. You need to be aware of who is Nalunga. What can Nalunga do? And you always psych up yourself. You always tell yourself it is possible. I can do it. I can manage it. Then you, 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 you track down your weaknesses. This one disturbs me. This is a challenge. This is a constraint. And then you say, how do I mitigate it? That is the only way you can be able to grow and break the glass ceiling. The other critical aspect that is also very important, work smart, but also work hard as a strategy. Allow me to talk about that aspect of working smart. There's a preacher that mentioned the five destiny helpers. It's one of the prayers we pray at home with my children at our family altar. We have an altar every day. We pray from six to seven with our maids, with everybody at home, with our piano, we worship. There are five destiny helpers that you need. The first one is a destiny connector. I wish you can write it down. A destiny connector is that little girl that connected Nayaman. They are so invisible. They are not easily, they are ordinary. They don't even have the capacity to help you. They don't have an ability. Maybe a cleaner in an office. I'm told of a minister who was leaving home and the cleaner told the minister, the maid, that honorable, today don't go. They've reshuffled, you're not on the list. The cleaner knew someone in state house was working there. So these are the destiny connectors. <laughs> honorable only to see the news at nine. The cabinet has been reshuffled and these are the ones they've dropped out. You need destiny connectors. The little girl told Nayaman that there is a prophet I know back then who can help you with that leprosy. And that's how he was helped. She had no capacity. She was ordinary. We need discernment to identify them. We need that wisdom. We need to pray to God to help us identify them. The other one that we need that is very, very important, we need our burden bearers. The people that cry with you, the people that rejoice with you, the people you can tell some of your things that are a bit sensitive. Remember, God uses people, much as he's in heaven and the Holy Spirit dwells in us, he uses people to take us to our next level. May God give you that burden bearer. Someone you can tell I've been disappointed. Someone you can tell I'm trying to become a, a, a tax expert. Someone you can tell I want to join judiciary. Pray for me. Someone you can tell I want to join a banking sector. Someone you can tell I want to do a master's in oil and gas. You need the burden bearers, people that can pray with you. You need an Elizabeth. Someone that Mary went and told, guess what? I'm carrying something in me. And Elizabeth said that actually what you're carrying is powerful. Because even the baby inside me has turned. Hallelujah. We need that Jonathan. Someone who will tell you the schemes of the father's soul. We need a Peter. Someone you move with. Then we also need gifted people. Let me tell you, you cannot break the glass ceiling without gifted people. My social media is being run by my son. He studied computer science. He runs by Twitter. Sometimes I don't even know what's there. You need people that are going to help you. 
because you cannot get anywhere until you have people that are gifted, that are skilled, that are empowered. You need people that help you write. You need people that edit for the judicial officers here. I believe you know you need a very good secretary if you're, you're going to make very good judgments that you're going to deliver. And for our president and vice president, you need a bodyguard who will understand you. Someone who can tell, help me with this. Someone who will not talk about you. Those are the gifted people. Then we need the men of influence and power. These are people that are already in those places that have already created a brand. They have integrity. We leverage on their strength. We leverage on their brand. They walk the talk. They defend us where we can defend ourselves. These are people like the chief cup bearer in Genesis 14 that told the king that, guess what? I know you have a challenge with a dream, but there is a dreamer I left in prison. So we need such people that are going to catapult us to our next level. And then we need the destiny connectors, someone like Mordecai, someone who is going to take you to Hegai and say, this is Hadassah, please prepare her, she's a Jewish girl. I want her to enter the palace and be among the girls you're preparing. So may God help us have those five destiny helpers. They are very key and very important. Because we are Christians, it is one thing to be born again. It is another thing to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, and it's another thing to learn how to pray. As you pray on a daily basis, I've trained my children every day. We say, God, connect us to destiny, help us. Connect us to men of influence and power. Open for us the corridors of power. Connect me to a gifted person. Connect me to a destiny helper. It has to be your day-to-day -day prayer life. Then the other aspect that is also very important, besides getting a mentor, we cannot get anywhere without favor. The Bible says in Psalms 5.12 that your favor surrounds me like a shield. And the Bible also says in Esther 3 that when Esther entered the king's presence, the Bible says that he pleased the king and she obtained favor. Remember, she obtained favor also from Haggai who was marinating and preparing them. So colleagues, fellow safeties and born again, we need favor. Someone shared the three principles of favor. One is unusual access. Accessing places where people cannot access. Accessing opportunities. Accessing scholarships. Accessing jobs. It takes favor for you to get unusual access. Unusual kindness, where people are going to be kind to you and bless you with things you don't expect. Sometimes it's miracle money. Sometimes it's opportunities. Unusual acceptance. That is the third one, dimension of favor. Let people accept you. There are things we need to pray for all the time. Like I said, you can be born again but struggle because you've not understood the mysteries of the kingdom. Because prayer is, is specific, you're direct. And also unusual remembrance. Do people remember you? If there's like an opportunity, will they say, let me give this opportunity to Nalunga. Let me call so-and-so. Let me call Gladys. Let me call Lynn. We need to every day tell God, please give me unusual remembrance. We need to make sure that we, we receive it. The Bible says in, 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 in Esther 6 that the king did not sleep until he remembered to reward Mordecai. He didn't sleep the whole night. He said, there's a man we didn't reward. There's a man that is important. So as we go through these sessions, it's important for us to align our Christian perspective with also the different aspects that we need to encounter. The other critical aspect, as I try to paraphrase, I was given 30 minutes, is competing with yourself. Please compete with yourself. Don't compete with people. When you compete with people, you become intriguers. You cook stories about people. You become malicious. You step on people's toes to get to the top. You cook funny stories. Sometimes we don't need to know what people have spoken about us, why. It doesn't matter. It doesn't hold value. We are going in another trajectory. Our destiny is bigger than what people see. We are greater than what we... So the more you listen to the naysayers, the more you're going to be pulled down. So don't compete with anybody else. Every day compete with yourself. Tell yourself, what can I be? What can I do better? What can I work on? When I joined uh, the tribunal, I hadn't written before an article in the papers. So I learned so much from the team. One of our colleagues was a, a former chief editor. 
editor of our new vision. I kept telling him, teach me how to write. Teach me how to write. Now I've written over like 24 articles in new vision and monitor. Actually, last year, Monitor gave me an award during Christmas, like a gift for Christmas. Why? Because I was writing my articles and they were probably seeing them. I want you to remember you're the best version of yourself. Don't struggle for anything. No one can take your space. No one can take the place you're supposed to be. No one can be you. If God created you to dominate spaces, you will dominate them in the name of Jesus because greatness is in us. Remember the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 6, that for us we are seated with Christ in higher realms, in heavenly places, meaning that for us we are meant to dominate. So always compete with you. Sit down and write down. I'm still learning so many things. I'm still personally struggling to pick a few lessons in my life. I continuously say, what can I do better? Aim for excellence. Hallelujah. And enjoy being who you are. Remember that you have to be desperate to succeed. You cannot become to be desperate to succeed. Wherever you are, in any appointment, be desperate to succeed. Think of the higher level. If you're already at the judiciary, you're already a judge, can you join the East African community court? Can you join the UN? Can you join the different platforms? There are so many different platforms. You can still be something better now. Remember, God said that we can be only the head and not the tail in Deuteronomy 28. And let me also say this as I try to make my concluding shots. There is a price to pay for success. It is very costly. There is a huge, huge price to pay. Sometimes it will be at the expense of your brand. Sometimes it will be at the expense of your name. And will always make mistakes. I remember when I opened up my website, some of my articles were not edited very well. I had to get someone to re-edit them. Do those things that you believe you can do. Be an innovator. You may not have money. Let me tell you, sometimes I don't even have the money to do certain things. But money will only follow a vision that is organized. Money and, uh, will only follow your dream. Don't say, I don't have money. I can't do this. Do you know there are so many free online courses in gender justice? There are free online courses in arbitration. There are free online courses in corporate governance. So success is at a cost. Prepare for the palace. The Bible says in Esther 2.9, that when Mordecai took Esther to Haggai, she was marinated with beauty treatments and special food, meaning that we have to prepare. Fellow students and colleagues, prepare for your next level. Be aggressive to get there. If you're a student and you want to be a seasoned lawyer, please try being the best version of you. Be smart. I told my children I cannot accept a boy to prick their ears. I struggled so much to tell my son to remove his child away from the hair. I told him, because you have that rough hair, he was saying, me, you know, for us computer scientists, we, we, we do our hair like this and what. I told him, your image is everything. Okay? Manage your social media. Sometimes the students don't manage it well. Monitor your TikTok. You know, you love TikTok so much. Sometimes I see my kids recording TikTok. I tell them, your TikTok is going to out outlive you. It's going to be on iCloud. Someone will pull it out one day when you've got a, a, an appointment. So you need to prepare yourself for the palace. Prepare yourself for certain places. Remember certain places need a good appearance. That's why Esther received the beauty treatments. You need to learn how to communicate. Practice your communication. Before I go anywhere, I have to go through my notes. I read the lines. I prepare. I plan. I read the Bible like I was coming here. So that everything is worked out. You can never be a good orator until you learn to plan. Monitor your dress code. I was asking the president last evening, that what are we dressing? Because my, I, I had two functions today. I have one function where I'm supposed to monitor or to mentor over 200 uh, women in church somewhere from three. So I was asking her, what am I going to wear? Why? Because certain places have a certain dress code. If I come in a jean and a katob, someone who's going to mentor you, you may think, are, are these things are for you? Hmm? <laughs> so the president told me, come in a flowered outfit. I checked, checked. I told her, I'm going to check in my tisaga and an outfit. I picked out this one. I said, let me accessorize it. Plan. I exercised it at night. I planned my jewelry. I looked for it. I said, now let me wear green. Yesterday I was wearing orange. Let me package myself for the palace. I don't know who will be there, but they may connect me to my next level in the name of Jesus. 
So you need to dress well. If you want good positions or in a low farm, dress very well. My, my daughter is, was in, during internship at a low farm. Sometimes she would say, Mommy, I'm going to wear this good dress as we at campus. I told her, my dear, you don't dress like that. Your boss will not move with you. Put on a white top, put on your coat, walk confidently, look them in the eye, be smart. I gave her the basics. Be careful about the male guys in the farms. Sometimes they make advances to the girls, but they don't actually mean it. They only want to eat your donut. You need to brush yourself for the palace. Package yourself very well. Learn which groups you're part of. Sometimes we are part of social media groups that are only draining the anointing we carry. Sieve through. You don't need to be on every group. I'm only on very few groups that benefit. I can be on one group, I learn from it. If a group is so toxic, I leave it. Why? You cannot reach your next level with toxic environment around you. Now, allow me as I conclude to talk about the challenges and the risks. I said earlier on that you're going to face attacks from people. I have insisted and said that there are storms, there are bad days, there are tough seasons, but remain focused. Let me tell you, you cannot enter the palace until you confront a Goliath out there. You cannot. You're going to find those attacks. You cannot reach your next point until you encounter challenges. Sometimes it's, 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 it's where you, you, you are at school. Sometimes people are draining you. Sometimes people are toxic. You know, because you're at, at university, and I have so many university students, sometimes my kids can tell me, Mommy, one time my son was telling me, Mommy, you know, every time my friends, I don't appear with them for outings, they think like a mommy's boy. I tell them, you're not a mommy's boy. Know who you are. Have the right friends. If your friends do not have the vision of where you're going, you don't need them. We need the right friends. Remember, your destiny to the palace is bigger than you and your friends. So you remain focused. Sometimes your friends may look like they are competing with you and backstab you. It is okay because it is healthy to face attacks. Do not focus on the gossip. Do not look at the ridicule. Don't, don't look at the mockery. So I want you to remember that life is big. I want you to remember that you need to focus. I want you to remember that your life is going to be better than what we see now. Continue to look at yourself great. Continue to believe in God. There's a side of me that so many people don't know. I'm a very, very, very prayerful woman. I think my boss knows. I pray. I fast. I seek God because our destiny is in the presence of God. The person we are going to be tomorrow can only be bathed and anchored in that presence. So seek God more. Write down your vision like Habakkuk says. Look at it continuously. Intercede for it. When you have a next level you're going through, please fast and pray. There are certain places we cannot enter until we are ready spiritually for them. Because sometimes God will not allow us because of the battles everywhere. You know that even in university people do witchcraft. Even in the spaces where different people work, there's a lot of attacks everywhere. Continue to pray because with God, all things are possible. With God, nothing can limit you. With God, everything will work out. God cannot bring us this far to let us down. We cannot know him and seek him like today. And he allows us to be ashamed in the presence of our enemies. We cannot suffer any humiliation. We are going to remain on the top because we were created for the top and we were created to be great. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you so much.